Uh, thank you very much, and good evening. Welcome to tonight's event. This is one of those events that uh, we've been holding over the last course of the last year. Uh, and a great, great opportunity for us to talk about water issues affecting San Diego County, as well as uh, an opportunity for you to ask questions, and we, we can hear about your concerns and, and other issues that you may have. I would like to uh, offer special thanks to the East County Economic Development Council and the San Diego Law Library for co-hosting tonight's forum, and the City of El Cajon for these great facilities. And especially I'd like to thank uh, Joe Marie Diamond, the Executive Director of the East County Economic Development Council, and Kim Lara, the Head of the Circulation Services for the uh, Law Library, for their support. Uh, May is Water Awareness Month, so it's appropriate that we're here tonight talking about water. And we're going to focus tonight primarily on the Colorado River. The Colorado River is a very important source of our water, supplies over 50% of our water to the region. And that's going to be the focus of, of our talk tonight. We have uh, several great speakers here that we're fortunate to have. First, we are pleased to introduce and have uh, uh, the Bureau of Reclamation uh, was able to participate with Dr. Terry Fulp. Got to click the thing. <laughs> Terry Fulp, he's the uh, Deputy Regional Director of the Lower Colorado Region, and he will provide an overview uh, of the river and its importance to the Southwest and some of the challenges the river is facing and what the Bureau is planning to do to address those issues. Then we have Hal Razek, our Colorado River Program Manager, who is here, and she will focus on the importance of our uh, river in our region, and she will talk of our important transfer, water transfer from the Imperial Irrigation District and the Canal Lining Project, and why that historic water transfer and agreement is uh, very, uh, very important to the region in San Diego. Uh, I will follow up after Hall and talk about the uh, Metropolitan Water District and San Diego County Water Authority's litigation on their rate structure, let you know what's going on with that, and we can uh, have an opportunity. After each speaker, they'll have an opportunity to uh, ask questions. I will let uh, Teresa uh, moderate during those times, and at the uh, end of uh, the talks, at the end of when I talk about the NW litigation, we'll have an opportunity also to ask questions from the audience. Uh, you can either ask the question yourself, or you can fill out a card and give it to our staff, and our, our staff will forward those questions to us. With that, let's talk about the sources of our San Diego County water supply uh, to the region. And 70% of our water is imported to San Diego County. The water travels hundreds of miles through uh, open channels and underground pipes to get to us. We're virtually at the end of the pipe in Southern California. Like I said, 50% of our water comes from the Colorado River. But if you look up north to the State Water Project, which is the Bay Delta area, 16% of our water came from Northern California. Now, typically, we see about 30% of our water supply from Northern California, but due to certain restrictions and availability of water, it's been reduced around 16% over the last year. <coughs> about 30% is our local supplies. And local supplies, we're talking about recycled water, groundwater, some desalination, and reservoir storage. Uh, but we also include conservation, because any, any amount of water that we conserve is a, is is a gallon that we don't have to import to the region. So about 30% of our supplies are local supplies and conservation. That really what makes up, up our water supply portfolio currently. Uh, it's no surprise that we, uh, we live in a very dry area. This is a picture depicts the, uh, the western United States and uh, the, uh, the region that depends on the Colorado River. In fact, uh, the last time San Diego relied on local supplies for 100 percent of their water supply was in 1947. So you can see that we don't have enough water locally to supply our needs. San Diego County gets an average of 11 inches of rain uh, per year, and, and that is not enough water locally to support our economy and our population that we serve. And we have to remember that we're in this dry, arid region. It's very important as we plan for the future that we have to plan for the variations in climate and the variations of wet weather conditions, not only in Southern California and San Diego, but for the uh, Northern California and, the, uh, and the, the flows in the Rockies that come into the Colorado River. Now, the Colorado River Basin, this map details uh, more of the flow of the basin. As you can see, there are a number of states that rely on the Colorado, including uh, uh, several that, that, that uh, such as uh, water districts and Native American tribes, uh, over 27 me 
million people depend on the river for their use. So it is a very important uh, water supply for a lot of the, a lot of the country. But a lot has changed. Uh, you got to realize that the, the water rights for the Colorado River were established over 90 years ago, and a lot has changed in that last 90 years. So it's very important that we balance the, uh, the competing interests we have within the, uh, the, 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 the lower states, the basin, upper basin and lower basin states. And uh, it's really a challenge that the Bureau of Reclamation has managing the water supply. And we work closely with the Bureau as well as other agencies to be as effective as we can in managing that supply. As I said, we're working together in a lot of different areas with regards to uh, the Colorado River. And uh, we're uh, partnering with uh, the Colorado water, River Water Asso Users Association, the Colorado River Board, and we're also participating in the Water Utility Climate Alliance uh, where we're looking at climate change and other issues affecting the Colorado River flow. Uh, this, these charts here depict uh, uh, where, we are, where we have been and where we're going with regards to our water diversification. If you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, 1991, uh, we, we relied on 95% of our water supply from the Metropolitan Water District and about 5% from uh, recycled water back in 1991. If you move into 2011, you'll see that our efforts to diversify our water supply have been very successful and that we now rely on about 45% of our water supply from Metropolitan Water District. And if you were around in 1991, we were in the midst of a very severe drought at that time. And we were forced with 30% uh, cutbacks, and we were looking at 50% cutbacks to the region. And uh, if it wasn't for the Miracle March range that uh, brought water, uh, increased our water supply, we would have been at 50% reduction in our water supply. And I wasn't here back then, but I hear that the, the public was lined up for blocks outside of the Water Authority uh, complaining about the, the cutbacks, and rightfully so. But one of the questions that came from the audience was, who thought it was a brilliant idea to have 95% of your water uh, from Metropolitan Water District? Because we had all of our eggs in one basket at that time. It was after that event that the Water Authority made efforts and made decisions to diversify their water supply so that we wouldn't be vulnerable from cutbacks from one source. And that's where we were today. We're looking at 2020, and we're moving forward with uh, continued diversification. And Hala will speak a little bit later about the uh, Imperial Irrigation District and the All-American Canal. These are two uh, uh, water transfers and conservation efforts. And if you look at the pie charts, we'll make up a considerable amount of our water supply now, and as it ramps up over the next uh, few years, an increasing amount of our water supply. So as you can see, we've made a lot of progress over the last 20 years. In fact, if you look at the demand of total acre feet of 578 and the total demand for 2011 of 594, you'll see that we're, not, we're using about the same amount of water today as we did 20 years ago, but our population is 600,000 uh, greater than it was back then. So I think this is a great success story. We've made a lot of progress, uh, and uh, we're continuing to move forward. Uh, to the 2020 mark, and we're continuing to implement projects to, to, to get us there. Um, at this point, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Fulp, uh, and he's going to uh, talk on the Colorado River with regards to the uh, uh, Bureau of Reclamation's efforts. <laughs> 